welcome to New Earth Lifestyles. I'm Janie King, host of the show. I'm glad you're with us today in downtown Manchester or wherever you are in the world. Today is June 12th, 2014, and it's a little bit of an overcast day in Manchester, but still it's better than snow. <laughs> and today my guest is my friend Barbara Woolley. Welcome, Barb. Thank you. And I'm Excited to be here with you. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. So, um, I thought maybe you could tell us what you do and who you are. And I know you have written this beautiful book that I've read. And you're a, a social worker. And you have so much really a lovely background. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, <laughs> I would. I <laughs> Where th to start? The, the thing that I would say, and we share this in common, is that we've had two, at least two lives in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Meaning that we had a life that was going on that was fine, uh -huh. and then something happened that shifted us uh -huh. into a completely different way of living in our life, That's being, true. thinking, all of that. Hmm, I never thought of that two lifetimes in one lifetime, but that's a really perfect way to put it. Right. So I, I would say that what I would focus on today is the process of awakening. Uh -huh. um, that there are some of us who have experienced this, and I know that you have, mm -hmm. and that we have other people in our lives who have experienced similarly. Uh -huh. And so it makes for a very different perception, world perception, uh, universal perception, actually. Right. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> We're way out there. We can right. be way out there. And it's also way in here. The same way in time. here. So everything is calibrated differently. And mm -hmm. so uh, many people in our lives who have lived with us in that other lifetime <laughs> don't understand like pre pre, uh, pre enlightenment or pre jumping off the cliff or <laughs> exactly <laughs> whatever you want to call that yeah and just to say Mainstream. that this is what we were lined up to experience in our life we were lined up to experience this before so we were born the big picture was we were going to do this no matter what Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I don't know how it was for you, mm -hmm. but for me, even from the time I was a little girl, I knew that something would happen in my life. Really? And what I would say to myself was, I'm going to become unfrozen. Oh, really? You actually said that as a little girl? To myself. To yourself. I don't know that I said it to anybody out loud, but I knew mm -hmm. that. You had that knowing. I had that knowing. And, and then when the big thaw happened... <laughs> I didn't really know what was happening, and so I write about it in my book, uh -huh. Out of the Box, A Soul-Surprising Journey, because truly the journey has been utterly surprising and continues to be <laughs> utterly surprising, but it's filled with life and joy and mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of wonderful learnings and wonderful people and wonderful experiences. But I was actually sitting in a professional training led by Dr. Charles Whitfield who a professional training for for mental health professionals okay okay so I was uh, a practicing licensed clinical social worker at the time okay getting continuing education credits which we all have to do mm -hmm. when we're in that uh, have a credential like that mm -hmm. and so I was in New York City for okay. two days of training and Dr. Whitfield, um, who is still alive, um, contributed hugely to the inner child movement. So he oh, yeah. launched um, this whole the body of work. Child movement. And how long ago was that? That would have been in, this event occurred for me in 1985. Okay. Okay, it's so a little time frame, yeah. right, 1985, and the experience that I had that day, and a friend was with me, mm -hmm. which was a good thing. We were doing a meditation, and I completely, co-consciously, for hours, relived my birth. And wow, for hours? <laughs> hours, hours. It was physical. It was visceral. So what what happened was. I was aware of myself in utero. Uh, the, the body 
that I was going to inhabit mm -hmm. in utero. Okay. And uh, very aware of the circumstances of the pregnancy that my mother experienced, things she did, things she didn't do. Wow. So you kind of knew how your mother, um, how you were prenatally cared for. Cared for, yeah. Absolutely. And so it was astonishing because then I went through the whole, and I went, so I went through knowing I was being born prematurely. Mm -hmm. that knowing from a soul perspective that life was going to have its certain certain challenges from a soul perspective from huh? a soul perspective and I had a choice in that moment to come on in or not I see and I decided I would brave it <laughs> <laughs> and here you are <laughs> and be born and be so born. I was and um and the story goes from there. So this went on for hours with the physical body remembering of the circumstances. So were you kind of like um, in fetal position? Or? I No, I wasn't in fetal position, but I had the full memory hmm, of coming down the birth canal mm -hmm. and actually coming out in, wow. into this world. So uh, what, what was that like? I mean, did you... We were actually talking about this on the way down because someone in my house just had a baby and that whole mm -hmm. thing of being in this nice hot or warm womb of black darkness and, and wet and coming out into this white, uh, uh, light, dry, I don't know, whatever world <laughs> is it, it's a dramatic right. opposite from where, how you've been living for nine months. So what was that like when you came out? Well, it was harsh. Mm -hmm. It was harsh, but the harshest part for me what had had to do really with how women were treated in childbirth at that time they were medicated out of their minds uh -huh. <laughs> okay right so uh she my mom was really non-participant in the birth mm -hmm. and then after birth she was sent home where she had three other children mm -hmm. and put on bed rest for two weeks mm -hmm. so she didn't come to see me so I didn't wow. get that maternal infant yeah, bonding wow. with her which was incredibly dramatic mm -hmm. but my father came and visited with me every single day so my bonding was with him with your father with my father and we had uh, an extremely and I would call it unique relationship all our lives together hmm. and so and my mother and I never had a closeness hmm. until I returned home that night <laughs> after getting recovered from this visceral co-conscious reliving. <laughs> right. Um, and how old were you then? Maybe in your 30s? I was 38-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so you my finally realized my why, why you hadn't had this relationship with your mother. Exactly. And it was, a, it was essential the timing of this was essential. And my mother, for I don't even remember why she was at my home, um, but she she greeted me on the steps before I even went wow. into the house. So you were coming home from this workshop and your mother was there waiting for I you. I came, drove down from <laughs> New York. <laughs> wow. And she was there. And I said, and my mother was, to that moment in time, emotionally avoidant. Mm -hmm. You know, could never have a conversation about deep subjects like this mm -hmm. we never talk like that mm -hmm. through my life and I said and so I said I have to tell you what just happened and she listened to every word and then she said to me I know <gasps> and I am so sorry it was <laughs> It was unbelievable. She, she apologized? She apologized. So that you must have had some kind of a psychic connection that weekend for her to be there to apologize to you at, by her knowing, somehow knowing, yeah. that she needed to apologize in that moment. Soul level orchestration. That's Soul. what I would say. Okay. And as, it, as the story unraveled from mm -hmm. there, yep. she and I had such a healing <laughs> in in our relationship she lived only for two years longer wow i had lung cancer and then uh, metastases and mm. we were so clear and so what a good blessing. in our relation it was wow. incredible blessing wow and this was a rebirthing back in the 80s when they were into um 
inner child work, which means working, which means basically what you did. You did a rebirthing. And uh, tell me more about the inner child work stuff that was going on then. I think I'd rather not focus so much on that as much as it was I needed to tend to that mm -hmm. aspect of myself. Yeah. Okay. That carried that wound mm -hmm. from pre-birth. True. Yep. And needed to heal it. And, um, mm -hmm. and truthfully, and I write about all of this in my book because it opened up a whole journey for me. Oh, how did that, that happen? That went on for many, many years. So well, that was the beginning the, of your of It your was journey. the beginning of, ah. of my journey, mm -hmm. my becoming unfrozen. Okay. And exploring the, the reasons why I had that birth and pre-birth experience with my mother. Ah. It was purposeful from a soul level because I had karmic healing with my father that needed to happen and so it would not have happened if I had that close relationship with her. I see. So we were thrust together <laughs> to do our work. I see. <laughs> with my father and I, which didn't really conclude until Oh, 2007. Wow. <laughs> you know, because there were layers to that work. Mm -hmm. And my mother and Mother Mary and other members of my team were instrumental in making sure that happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. And who is your team? <laughs> uh, spirit guides, masters, uh, angels and archangels, uh -huh. um, indigenous individuals with whom I've had a deep heart connection over millennia so uh, so and that's that what this opened up for you was that all of that understanding of your of your soul group of your what did you call them your team my team <laughs> I call my wonderful team your team <laughs> the team They're that's my... here but unseen by most people right right wow how fascinating yeah it's wonderful and it is wonderful and it still unfolds it still unfolds. It never ends. Mm -hmm. Even even the masters who are on the uh, working in the other realms, <laughs> they're very clear that it's not done for them either. Mm -hmm. You know, I had the, I have had this great teacher named White Waters, um, who in his and I did meet him in the physical. He's you know he was a primary teacher for me in this lifetime, and he has joked that. Yeah, he might be on cloud 35, <laughs> but he's got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> so is that going down to one or going up to a infinity? Oh, <laughs> returning home. Returning home. <laughs> so, um, and I would never have talked the way I'm talking with you before 1985. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's a whole uh, other. And I know that feeling because that's how I, sh I shifted in the 90s, um, probably 1994 or 5-ish. So... This is this is where we're going. We're all shifting. We're, this is our second life, our second journey in the yeah. same lifetime. Right. <laughs> and it feels so great. It does. So freeing. Like you said, you're unfrozen. Mm -hmm. Out of the box. Out of the box. <laughs> so tell us a little more about the book. Is that story in the book? That story is the beginning of the book. Ah, because that's the beginning of the changes. Because that's changes. Where, it all, where it all flows from. So uh -huh. the book um, actually focuses on karmic healing and how essential it is for each of us, uh, I'll speak for each of us, that we have work that we're here to do that we may not even know that we're here to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really a process of showing up to allow it to happen. As Whitewaters has always said, we're here to heal ourselves, to hear us, heal our soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's our primary work. And I certainly would say that I've, um, certainly had very visceral, even very physical uh, immersions in that work for which I'm tremendously grateful. So uh, out of the box is the story of healing anger from incidents that occurred even as long as ago as the cusp of Sumerian Egyptian times and that had to do with my father. There's a murder mystery in there, but I'm not going to tell too much <laughs> about it. Is that what you're it. writing now? 
Uh, no, that's in the book. Oh, that's in the book. That's in the book. Oh, that's right. It's been a long time since I read your book. So well, I, I you know what? I think it. the book is a little dense. It is. There's, well, there's, there's a lot, lot in there. There's a lot in there. And so it's story upon story of... It is. It's like short stories of your life of this happened and then mm-hmm. this happened. and How you follow the clues. Right. You follow the clues. And you are such a model for that, for, for just... Um, mm-hmm listening intuitively and following the clue or listening however you listen and and going to the next step and actually physically going to those places on the earth you, you do that that's what you do that's what you started doing after this this shift that happened in 85 with your mother right and the rebirthing process right and so um that to me is is so fascinating because I'm well I'm a homebody and I don't do all that moving around so I I though I'm, li- I'm listening to my intuition a lot more um, I don't know if I'd go anywhere if they said you have to go here or, you know because you, you you've been <laughs> to most of the sacred sites around the world <coughs> haven't you <laughs> well the funny I, you know we don't all do it the same way that's true so <laughs> this is the script that I and others wrote <laughs> so and and I call it my spiritual itinerary and I've actually okay. had people come up like at the Cahokia Mounds which are in uh, Illinois just over the river from St. Louis. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's an it's an ancient mound culture that is really truly an amazing site and mm. and I showed up there one day and I didn't know this person. This person walked right up to me and she looked at me and she said, "So, you made it." <laughs> <laughs> and then she walked off. And I know that sounds really weird, but I knew what she meant. <laughs> really? <laughs> So you and so I checked that off on my spiritual itinerary. Ah. The next time I tried to go there, I couldn't get there. Because <laughs> you didn't need to. I had to go someplace else. Wow. Yeah. And wow, that's amazing. That, <laughs> so your spiritual itinerary is just, it comes along piecemeal one step at a time, or you kind of have this whole whole itinerary already spread out? You know, it's really interesting, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> you know it is. Because, uh, you know, when I wrote, the book, Mm -hmm. which is a compilation of 25 years of travels and events and sagas and deep inner healing and lots of fun, I want to say. Lots of fun and lots of learning. um, But it's a very intricate design. So there's this puzzle and, and the pieces go into the puzzle and they go into the puzzle over time. Not everything gets dealt with. So I'll give you an example. I finally started getting some craniosacral therapy, in, uh, which is a wonderful form of body talk, body work, very subtle work. I didn't know anything about it when I went for it. And immediately I'm the person who's working with me is back in 92, she said, so, What's the problem with your right side, your right leg? And I said, I'm stumped. There's nothing wrong with my right leg. She says, no, 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 no. There's something there. And I think she's totally not reading me right, Mm -hmm. Okay. So I said, well, I broke my left leg when I was seven and a half, almost eight. And I was casted. And that was a huge event in my life. I don't know what's wrong with my right leg. So we worked on we worked on that, whatever it meant. And um, what came up started a whole saga and a whole series of healing work that didn't conclude until 1997. And I couldn't mm. force it. I tried to go for, I knew there was something about that age I didn't have conscious recollection of what it was. You mean seven-year-old? Right. Or when you broke your leg? When I broke my leg. I didn't even have that context. Mm-hmm. I, had a, I had a psychotherapist. She was awesome. I, said, I, I begged her to hypnotically induce me and let's go for whatever it is about that age, not even making mm-hmm. the association with a broken leg. And I scared the daylights out of her. I came out of it screaming at the top of my lungs. She, <laughs> she would never do that with me again. And so that didn't happen. Oh, so you didn't get what you wanted out of that hypnosis? No, but. that would have been about 1987. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was trying to get at it then, and I couldn't. 
1992, we're doing the craniosacral work. I was at that point having weird sensations on the back of my head, which I'd been to three physicians about, and they all said, you're normal, there's nothing wrong there. <laughs> and um, during the craniosacral work, I realized it just came up. Oh, and it made absolute sense, of course. I had a major concussion when I broke my leg. I fell off a jungle gym and the, the thing that, and I don't know, I don't remember that I've fallen. Mm -hmm. All I remember is that the rescue squad had smelling spots under my nose and that's what brought me to ah. before the ambulance ride to the hospital. So I missed that whole sequence of events. Ah. All I knew was I was in my bathing suit I had my Mickey Mouse club, <laughs> <laughs> homemade pocketbook and slippers, uh, moccasins, and I had come from swimming lessons. Mm -hmm. And so that's as far as we got that day, but it cleared the sensation along the back of my head. So when you, Once you found out that you had a concussion from that accident. Right. Because you never knew that before. I didn't know that. Nobody told me. It was never a topic of discussion. So how did that come up? They, they, they were holding your head. The cranial sacral therapist was touching you somewhere that you just she had that amazing awareness? or Yes. It was just an awareness that came up. Uh -huh. So we left that story, and I think, okay, great. I had a, I had a concussion. Mm -hmm. End of story. And then I was at a tribal event. Okay. In a uh, tribal, uh, it was a peace, uh, a peace uh, gathering called together by Grandmother Twyla Nitch, Seneca Elder, who was also one of my teachers. Uh, I went through Wolf Clan um, teachings with her and mm -hmm. other teachers. And so I was in Florida for the gathering, uh, Wolf Clan gathering in 1997, and I met a Cherokee elder. And he invited me after I had some time to travel, and he invited me to back to his home in Florida. He wanted to do, do some work on me. So I went, and I laid on his table, and my whole right side went dead. I was scared to death. I said, you have to stop what you're doing. I don't understand what's happening here, but all I can say is that my right leg is dead. Wow. <laughs> scared the heck out of me and I didn't know him well enough mm -hmm. uh, to proceed. He would have probably worked it through. I'm sure he saw what was going on there. Mm -hmm. But I came home and I had a really good friend who was in Barbara Brennan training like you've been through. <laughs> and I said, Nitsa, we have some work we need to do. This is what I need. Um, so we did some EMDR because she was trained in that as was I. Which is? Eye movement desensitization reprocessing. Eye which, movement desensitization reprocessing. Right. It's a powerful medium. I knew she could work with me. I trusted her to do that. And I said, once we get there, then bam, I want you to do your Barbara Brennan work. Just go for it, whatever. <laughs> so how did you know when you got there? Well, what does get there mean? Well, I all of a sudden went in, I just went up the tube of light into the Crystal City, and here I am. And I realize so I've had a near-death experience, uh -huh. okay? And I couldn't get it back in 1987. Right. This is what I'm saying it's about the, pieces, the layering yeah. in the piece, how they're layered in. Right. I have to follow the clues and I have to pursue it. Right, one step at a time. One step at a time and there's a timing that is beyond anything that I can consciously orchestrate. Right. You can't you can't put your ego or your mind into it to do what you want. You have to do it the way spirit calls us to do right. the right timing that's right for you. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm in the city of light and I'm so excited. <laughs> As so this little working. seven and almost eight year old child, you know, oh, I'm having the memory. Oh, so I, so you, if you could just back up so I can totally picture <laughs> where we're going because we're going pretty quickly. So Nitz right. is working on you, doing some energy work, and you go back to your seven year old accident somewhere in by leaving your body or re experiencing it, re experiencing I'm, it somehow. And then right. when you re experienced it, it took you to the city. This emerald, this the crystalline city this of crystalline light. Crystalline city, city of light. As you're re-experiencing what happened when you were seven and had that accident. Exactly. Ah. Okay. It was amazing. It was so joyful. 
-hmm. And I had this wonderful reunion with all my beloveds in spirit (laughs) (laughs) who were in that uh, that place at that time. And then I was told, but sorry, it's time for you to go back. You're not done down there. (laughs) Uh And I'm like, I don't want to go back. You need to go back. You need to finish this. And that was absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Boom, back down the tunnel of light. And so Hmm. I got the whole story in this layering Mm -hmm. piece. And so it was such a teaching about matters of spirit Mm -hmm. and uh, spiritual itinerary. Mm -hmm. And uh, that there's a timing that's right for everything. And when it's right and when it's time, it'll happen. Mm So, so patience is really mm-hmm. key for all of this to to see the to see the, um, the get the pieces as they come and then let go for the rec- next next time to show up on its own kind of show, exactly. it shows up. Although you went to Nietzsche after you had that other experience because you knew there was more to do there and that kept that experience going to that final place of going back to, to re-experience what happened. Yes, and then I would say. Probably Nietzsche and I had contracted to do that work together uh-huh. uh, on the other side before we came in. That's how <laughs> I would means understand. On the it. other side before we came in means before we were, you were born, or your souls had come together, and or there was some kind of a contract made between lives. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, yeah. so then that's kind of what happens when we come into the physical body. This lifetime we were connecting mm-hmm. in with these contracts that were made perhaps on the other side before we came in, and that's what Nietzsche was. You you had. And that's, it makes so much sense because sometimes when we meet people, we feel like we've known them forever, and, and we have. That's right. They've been on the other side with us, or the, and they mm-hmm. come in other lifetimes with us, and we have known them. And that's what Nitsa was to you, is what you were just saying. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. beautiful. <laughs> and then it was done, and I didn't need to pursue anything about that any longer. Ah. I got the information that I needed. Right. So... So there are many stories in Out of the Box that have to do with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, that's an amazing story in (laughs) itself. (laughs) Uh, You could probably write a book about that uh, that palace that you went to, the the crystalline castle. What do you call it again? Uh, It was the um, crystal crystal realm. Crystal realm. I would say. Yeah, it would be tenth dimensional and beyond. Tenth dimensional. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah, like. that's how I understand it. <laughs> yeah, and there are many, many dimensions. Yeah. So tenth dimension would that be um, access through the tenth chakra? Yes. Okay. And, it, and it's which the, is an energy center that, that we all have somewhere up here. Yeah. 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 Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Fun stuff. <laughs> it's fun stuff, and it's neat that we're sharing this together. It is neat. Yeah. It is neat. It I is. can now remember it. I think you might have told me some of this pieces, and okay. I know I've read your book, but it's been a couple year, or at least a year since I read your book, and mm-hmm. I know there was so many fascinating stories in there that um, that you you're just such a model for people to to keep on digging into who you are, and, and like you said, growing your soul or what we're here to do, which is what mm-hmm. I believe too that we're here to. Um, to, to move into the light, to become more enlightened, for our soul to c- continue to grow into who we truly mm-hmm. are, which is the being of light, of the fla- the the um, spark of God or our God self, or yes, the highest consciousness, mm-hmm. source energy, the yeah. the light, which brings joy and passion and exuberance for living. Yes, yes. <laughs> Woohoo! Which is what the show is about. <laughs> which New is Earth what the show is about. <laughs> yes, it is. It's it's, uh, it's just giving everyone an opportunity to see people like you mm-hmm. and and to be inspired. Hopefully, hopefully, people uh, you you the viewer can um, look at your life mm-hmm. and things that might have happened in your life uh, that may uh, resonate with what's gone on with you, Barb. And as and even uh, looking at childhood or um, um, inner child work. And I know that we go through these fads. So there's inner child work, and then there was, there was mm-hmm. S before that. Or there, there's all these different modalities to help us to grow into our soul. And I'm, I don't know what's popular right now, but I'm sure there are some modalities that are really out there 
that everyone's right. trying to do and get in right. to change, to grow, to be happy, which is what, what we're here to do. We're here to enjoy our lives mm -hmm. and to grow our soul and to live in a, a life of uh, joy and love. I believe. And, <laughs> and you, it's nice to have you sitting here saying the same thing. Well, We're going to gong on that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You can double gong it. <laughs> uh, because the unlocking and the healing allows us to have more of who we really are. Yes. Um, present here now. And with that Truly, we don't have to take life so seriously. Right, <laughs> right? exactly. We, right. Why do we take life so seriously? I've taken my whole life so seriously. Mm. I have to do it this way. I have to do it that way. Oh, they don't want me to do it that way. I better go over here and do it that way. And being so rigid. And and now I have, I, I think getting to be a certain age, you, I, my, I've kind of broken out of the egg and said, I don't care anymore. <laughs> you know, when am I going to live my life fully? <laughs> Cause and been... you didn't need to wear a purple hat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? No. <laughs> Who wears a purple hat? A certain age category of women in particular. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we're, we're doing it without that. We don't need to oh, do that, but true. I don't, I'm not disparaging. I just, we didn't have to do it that way. That's right. We didn't. Right. We all, and, and I think we, we all have a uniqueness that so we can do it our own way. And mm -hmm. if we can only accept ourselves doing it, however, like you say, however yeah. your itinerary is, is, is kind of guiding you. Exactly. So I want to say a little bit more about the clues because yeah. okay. um, it's a little startling what I write about in the book. <gasps> it is? <laughs> Better read that book. <laughs> Murder because <mysteries>. I get <laughs> very physical um, clue giving. All right. What does and, that mean? Well, uh, for it, uh, I'll give an example in a minute. And I just want to be very, very clear that the way it happens for me is it it doesn't happen that way for many people. Right. I guess I needed a whole lot of kicks in the butt. <laughs> Uh-oh. <coughs> but it's that a good physical. thing. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. So following the clues is a practice. All right. I didn't so willingly follow the clues. I had to have some very dramatic events. <laughs> like uh, I, I knew that I was supposed to sell my house. Okay, and yeah. I didn't. I loved my house. We did lots of wonderful things, and I raised my kids there. And and I, oh shucks, the phone. Oops. Oh, oh well. This is a clue to shut your cell phone off. <laughs> I don't hear a thing. Go ahead. <laughs> It'll stop. Anyway, um, the background music. <laughs> right. Right. So, uh, so I heard that, and I knew it, and I chose to override it until one day I drove in my my driveway and I literally watched my mailbox with an invisible force go down on the ground <laughs> so people say yeah right but it happened and my mailbox was very stable and fine it wasn't like it was rotted out and I knew what that meant which is like we've given you a year now you need to do this this is my team my wonderful team and it turned out to Spiritual be perfect. Thing. Yeah, so so that so was the clue. That, that was, was the, the physical clue. thing. It's time to sell your house when exactly. you saw the mailbox go flump right in front of your eyes. Exactly. <laughs> so and my house was sold exactly a year from that time. Oh. I listed it. Uh, actually, friends of mine bought it. My daughter, who was the younger of the kids, went off to college, uh -huh. and I didn't need to have a house anymore because I was being itinerary. set off. I had an itinerary to abide by. So, so that happened, and I, I did have a private clinical practice, and the lease would, so that was the first thing that happened. And then within a matter of time, I really get the message that I need to let go of my clinical practices it's like what do you mean <laughs> let go of my source of income yeah how, wow, how is that's this pretty scary <laughs> well it was so of course i dragged my feet over that yeah. until and this is the honest to goodness truth and i honor the client who was sitting in my office this day because lots of things happen around him another contract um another soul contract made before another you came soul con contract he was just totally wonderful delightful man and a car hit the back of the office <laughs> and he was sitting in the sofa and at another level of my being I knew 
that this meant your lease is sitting in that <coughs> mailbox, your inbox, don't sign it, it's time to let go of this office. The poor man who hit the office, he was just really driving from a parking area behind the building. He probably was no, not going any faster than five miles an hour. And he comes and he says, he's scratching his head and he said, I don't know how this even happened. <laughs> and I'm saying and to myself, <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it. It was spirit working, telling you to get out, to, to not sign your lease, and to move on. Exactly. Wow. So I didn't renew the lease. And then I rented, uh, <laughs> I rented space from friends who had a practice. And my clients and I knew this was just it. It was mm -hmm. done. It was time to, to end it. Mm -hmm. And the rest, so I referred them out. And I let go, and that's when I really began a lot of international travel and uh, to these sacred sites and uh, stepping up the learning about energy and uh, how the etheric world intersects with the physical world. I mean, it was just an incredible learning curve. So those were the clues, and I just learned that I really needed to pay attention when they happened mm -hmm. because they were happening for a good reason, <laughs> right? right? Right. Now, how did uh, the next step progress as far as where to go when? International it's clues. Travel. It's clues. So for a while, I traveled with a group called Athena Leadership Center, and we would go to remote areas like Outer Mongolia, uh, and people would say Outer Mongolia. Yeah. That's probably my favorite place that I ever visited in wow. all the world. Wow. Honestly, it was so amazing. And so I would just, I would see these trips and I would say, okay, I need to go on these trips. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're signed up for them. Okay. And it would happen. So what happened in Outer Mongolia? That's where the, the, the horse shaman are, isn't it? Right. So Outer Mongolia, we went, actually, to enter into Shambhala, ah. the etheric city of light, right. home of the masters, mm -hmm. and we did it. Really? We absolutely... I thought that that was something on another dimension that was it is. everywhere. It is interdimensional, another dimensional. It sits over... Uh, outer Mongolia really <laughs> right so we had and uh, so we were going to have that experience and we really did there's a way of entering a higher dimensional frequency mm -hmm. where you you sort of bump into it and you're uplifted into it mm. and color sound vibration everything is it's indescribable really but you know you're there when you're in it and so we meditated in that we had guides who mm -hmm. mongolian guides who were very aware mm -hmm. of the existence of this really uh, absolutely wow. absolutely and talked to us about it hmm. the cook at the campsite where we <laughs> stayed mm -hmm. by the orkhan waterfalls Ooh. he came out which is considered the birthplace of the mongolian people he came and he talked to us and he he said that he had gone there three times and it <laughs> so was it's a like, common thing there well yes so they have that higher but, spiritual awareness right. it's a very high frequency mm -hmm. in outer mongolia wow right pretty cool it was very, really amazing it was utterly amazing and a highlight of my life wow yeah and and what do you feel um you brought back from that experience or what did the that, frequency the frequency yeah the, the frequency so it's in me it's in all of us mm -hmm. who were there it's in our field it's integrated into our what we would call our etheric bodies mm -hmm. our energy so field, yeah. yeah in our etheric yeah. energy field another way of saying is it's an energetic upgrade yeah okay <laughs> download upgrade whatever you want to <laughs> call it A download and upgrade <laughs> right right wow pretty cool yeah, yeah. so that's some of what's in my book
Mm-hmm. But I want to I want to get back to what we were talking about, which is the, the work is just continuing, and mm-hmm. some of what you and I have lined up <laughs> is this wonderful little mini retreat yes. at your studio. That's on right. I can't 20th. wait. Yeah, June twenty eighth. We'll be in mm-hmm. New London, New Hampshire with Barb. You'll be um, doing some work, and I'll be doing work together with you to do this mini retreat from nine to one. Right, so talk about what you're going to do. Well, this is going to be a fun Saturday where I will be doing um, mindful movement, and and that mindful movement will um, begin the day helping us to open our energy field, to move our body, and to come in and pay attention to how our body moves and um, opening up our energy centers, our chakras, and um, getting in touch with ourselves on on a really close level close um, connection and um, then once we're open you'll be teaching us what you're going to do next tapping which is the so as we're talking about things get recycled around so tapping actually began as emotion as uh, thought field therapy back in the late 80s into the early 90s right Um, so it's a way of working Every, everybody's going to work on their own bodies, mm-hmm. tapping at specific points on acupressure points. Right. Right. Uh, thought it, field therapy. Thought it? field therapy brought out by Dr. Roger Callahan. So over the years, it's morphed into emotional freedom technique, which is people probably more widely un- know about this technique as emotional freedom technique. Right. Um, and the latest version of it is tapping mm-hmm. okay brought forward with by a dynamic young man named Nick Ortner mm-hmm. um, and so it's now out for everybody it's a wonderful way of unkinking the body's wiring mm-hmm. to allow flow I and like that unkinking the body's wiring because our wiring mm-hmm. gets tangled just by living just by living just by living and so it's a very practical simple easy way so you're gonna loosen all us loosen it all up get loosey-goosey and then we can re- do the tapping however we do it all, yep. how, all over the body and you'll be taking us through the tapping sequence after yep. we've loosened up and um, made, a, made a conscious connection with all of our body that's going to work really great. I can feel how wonderful that's going to be. Right, and we're all going to wind up laughing. <laughs> right, laughter therapy is no, always part in of it. my experience because <laughs> I've been doing this since '93. There's no way to do it without laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Which is great. Yes, and laughter is the best medicine. It is. Goes into all the cells, Happy. jiggles the cells. Yep. 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 And Happy it, cells. Happy cells. <laughs> And every cell wants to be laughing and happy. That they, they yeah. helps. That helps all the everything to get um, back into alignment, mm-hmm. along with the with the tapping and the movement. So, if you're interested mm-hmm. in coming to that, that's uh, the Jan- June 28th, and you can go to my website. And I have it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't do I have it on my website. You'll have to email me, connect with me, and we can talk about it. That's right. Okay. So yeah. we hope you'll join us. Yeah, hope you'll join us for that. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So we might have other things going on too because you're looking at possibly um, using the studio space and then you're going to be doing some other recent movement following your itinerary. Did you I want to talk am. about that at all? More to come on that. <laughs> More to come, okay. <laughs> I, ha- I have to move into it and live a little bit of it. Okay. Other than just to say that there, there's something beautiful happening mm-hmm. in Western North Carolina with Soul Support Systems Mm-hmm. Uh, and Flo Aivia Magdalena, mm-hmm. uh, author of I Remember Union. So we're all working together to create a, a beautiful retreat center, which is dedicated to drawing out that true essence that we are, that pure soul uh, creational essence that we are. Mm. So uh, more to come on that. It's very exciting. Excellent. Yes. Can't wait to hear and see and feel how that goes for you. Mm-hmm. That's great. And um, you've been getting some little nudges on that movement from. <laughs> oh, um, the blue light special. <laughs> <laughs> My friends who moved me into that body of work, the soul recognition work, were persistent with me. And I write again <laughs> about they're in the book about too. that they're in the book too because I had these blue 
light that I could see, just like I'm looking at you here, they would come to me every night mm -hmm. when I would lay down wow. to bed in 1994, and it went on for months. And they'd leave messages on my on my voicemail. Wow. Uh, a tonal uh, communication beeps and boops. Uh, uh, which all stopped the day I put the check in for soul recognition facilitator <laughs> training. Wow. So I went, and they got me where, where I was supposed to go. It's a beautiful uh, consciousness, mm -hmm. uh, creational consciousness that wanted me to do this work, mm -hmm. um, which was actually taught by Mary Magdalene to, from the etheric realms to mm -hmm. Floevia Magdalena. And so uh, as the, and we've kept in touch over the years, I've gone off and done, of course, this journey. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, so this convergence again, so they've, the blue lights have been coming in. Oh, they rel have. Relative to this retreat center in North Carolina. So that's mm -hmm. how I knew I, it was it was important. Important for you to important to, look at going. to be part of uh, whatever my role in that is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, supporting and encouraging and cheering and <laughs> and saying it's good work and enjoying life together. Absolutely. And it, it feels like the land down there is really mm -hmm. calling to you in North Carolina. Uh, it feels like the acreage is the the earth is whew, I can kind of feel that. It's loaded. Mm. It's beautiful. It's, it's really pulsing. Beautiful. Mm. You want to take a call? Uh, sure. Hello, you're on the air. This is Janie. And what's your name? Mary. Hi, Mary. How can we help you today? Um, I just wanted to talk to them. Um, hello? Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to talk with them about, like, anything. Oh, you're... Like, asking me a question or something. Oh, I thought you wanted to uh, ask us a question. You're on the air. Did you know you're on the air? <laughs> yeah, I guess you need, to turn, you need to turn that down, whatever's in the background. Oh, yeah. What is your question? Um, I just want to know, um... But what do you like to have fun and stuff? What do we do to have fun? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we go out and walk on the earth. That's a lot of fun. That's what do you do? true. What do you do to have fun? Yeah, me too. Great. Oh, that's good because that's truth when you walk on the earth. What I've come to understand is that, that the natural world is a place of... Yeah. Yep, you got it. You, you understand that. <laughs> what do you do for fun, Mary? Um, I like to walk on the earth, too. Great. Uh-huh. Great. And uh, do you have a place to walk where you are? What? Do you have a place to walk on the earth where you live? Um, sometimes I walk in trails and stuff. Great. Great. So it also, do you talk to the animals and the trees? Um, no. You might, you might try that because they'll talk back when, when, when they know you're open to communication, they'll talk back. Yeah, the, when the animal, when you talk with the animals and the trees and the and the earth, it it can communicate back to you if you pay attention. So that could be a nice way to have fun, a new way. <laughs> okay, I hope we answered your question for now, Mary. Thanks for calling. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> what do we do to have fun? Yeah. We do all kinds of things to have fun. I'm on this TV show. This is fun for me and interviewing my friends that are spiritual uh, healers and um, sojourners on the path to enlightenment or to find yeah. our soul, to, to find out what is fun. What is fun? What is, how, do, how do we become yeah. happy? Not stopping ourselves. Not stopping. Not hiding ourselves. Exactly. Not stopping right. ourselves. Not hiding ourselves. That's so mm -hmm. important. That's what I've done all my life. 
And I've done it a fair portion of mine, too, <laughs> being a good girl. You That's know? right, being a good girl. Right. And we don't need to do that. Well, no. we need to just live our lives to the fullest as long as we're not harming anyone or anything or breaking any laws. Exactly. Yeah. Not hurting anybody else. It's all fun. It is all it's fun. It's all fun. Life can be fun just yeah. by um, living it to the fullest. Living it. The movement that you do, moving the, the body, yep. not being shy about moving our bodies. Right, not being shy, moving your whole right. body. And we'll be doing some um, some Tai Chi, some yoga, some breathing exercises. So, yeah, yeah. Um, getting to know your own body is important, just mm. touching your own body and, and, and getting to, mm. do, you know, loving your own body. I One person that was in my program this morning, I do the movement, at, um, mindful movement mm. in my studio in the morning, and she had a... Um, uh, the, there's a muscle on her foot so if you imagine that this is your foot and there's a muscle right here that's um, been bothering her and she's been wearing a, a brace all summer long and it's really been hard for um, her to to walk so we worked on her loving that place uh, loving the po point in your that place in your uh, body that's been that's bothering you where the pain is so I guess we have another caller would you like to take one sure more? sure it might be the same one I'm not sure oh, there you go. Yeah, I don't want to take her again. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Next time. And I would say also, going to gatherings of like-minded people. Yes, gatherings really? of like-minded people that resonate with you. They help right. you to open your heart up more, don't they? They do. A lot of Ceremonial fun. events, like we like to go to Inipi Sweat Lodge. Right. All right. Um, for for some people that may sound like a strange thing to do, but it mm -hmm. it uh, helps us to recenter mm -hmm. and to feel that connection with everything. Mm -hmm. And there is so much joy there in is. that. There is. Yes. And and ceremony, getting mm -hmm. back to the earth and, and yeah. um, getting in touch with our indigenous mm -hmm. roots. That mm -hmm. um, we, for me, I wasn't able to grow up that way, but now connecting in with uh, the sweat lodge and the other ceremonies of yeah. drumming and having ceremonies around the full moon, around the fire, and drumming and chanting and having a uh, connect um, um, gatherings with people. It, it's fun. That it is, is fun. fun. It, and you're, I'm in my yeah. essence. I'm in my pure light when I'm doing that, and that is that is the epitome of fun. What what do you love to do? What do you love to what makes you the happiest, right? And so exactly. that's what you love to do. Very similar to me. Absolutely, that's where I'm happiest. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we need to go to mo more often than not. In right. fact, we want to stay there, don't we? Yep. Stay Bobbing in the, in the ocean. Oh yeah, that's is, another is thing. a good one. That's another thing. I love going to the ocean yeah. and and uh, just to get in the water, get in the salt water, mm -hmm. and be pushed around by the waves. <laughs> yep, yeah. that all can be fun. Yeah, so we have well, much to do. Much to do. Well, yep. so it's been great having you on the show. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. It's been fun, <laughs> <laughs> and our intention was that we would laugh and have fun yes, on the show. Yes, here we go. We're laughing. And Yay! Having fun. Just talking. <laughs> just talking about things that we like to talk about. That's another way to have fun, isn't it? Just exactly. talking about what Yay. what we like, what we enjoy. And don't dwell yeah. on what we don't, but give energy to what we want and what we love. And Always have fun give doing. energy to and what? breathe. Yes. Always give energy to yeah. the highest and the best. So this is a show about yeah. shifting consciousness, about giving you, the mm. viewer, new ways of looking at how you live your life. Mm. How do you have fun? And so I'm so grateful to have Barb on the show telling us about her, your life experiences and bringing her book out of the box. So if you're interested in some of her adventures, some of Barb's adventures, please do look at that. Look at that. You can get it at Amazon or anywhere online. You can get it on Amazon. It's in, uh, it's in talking book form. Oh, cool. It's on Kindle. It's in paperback, um, published by All Things That Matter Press, which is a wonderful organization. All Things That Matter. Organization. Everything. All, oh. all Things That Matter Press. Hmm. So Pretty cool. Uh, yes. And next week, uh, Saul Solomon will be with us. And Saul mm. has um, a company he created, I, I don't know how long ago, 30 or 40 years ago, and it's called Truly Natural. And he's been... Mm. Uh, I believe, I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, I believe he's distributing natural um, health food products or natural rather, um, supplements for a long time, and he's into the natural health food um, arena. And so he's going to be talking about that, and he's also got a book coming that he's in the middle of writing. So I'm looking forward to seeing Saul. I've known him for some time, and he'll be on the show next week. So I hope you can join us for that, and have fun, and 
do good work as <laughs> and show up for yourselves yeah show up for yourself because you are the I, yeah. I, that's what i say on the show mm -hmm. uh, many many times you are the one that knows how to help you be happy only you know that so mm -hmm. show up for yourself is a good way to put it right. so thanks for being with us today and thank you again mm -hmm. barb woolley for being on the show with me and i hope you can come maybe you can join us on the 28th to do our little mini retreat together until then remember yeah. your heart knows the way mm -hmm.